Well, you can't get fire without burning something, and you can't burn anything on the moon because there's no air. So you have to have both the oxidant and the fuel, and when you mix them together, they have to burn and they have to set fire to themselves spontaneously so you don't have an astronaut with a match standing on the ground. And you want them to produce a huge amount of energy so that you don't need a very large weight of fuel to get you up again. Today we're going to demonstrate the, the rocket fuel or the rocket motor which was used to propel the, the lunar module back from the, the surface of the moon. And this is a quite amazing type of chemistry where we take a fuel and an oxidant and we react the two and instantaneously they will combust without the requirement of any ignition source. So this is a hypergolic reaction. So we need to take a fuel and in the case of um, this rocket we're going to use unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine which was one of the fuels used in the lunar program. And the key point is that it reacts very, 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 very rapidly with a strong oxidant, in this case N2O4, to generate lots of gases, lots of strong bonds like nitrogen, dinitrogen molecules, and generate a lot of thrust to get the, the rocket off the off the moon. So here you can see we have a setup of the moon of the of the rocket. And this was developed some years ago by technicians and academics in our school of chemistry. And we brought it back out from the stores to celebrate the lunar landing. So I will load the fuel, the un unsymmetrical diamethyl hydrazine in this tank and I will load the, the oxidant N2O4 in this tank and then by the wonders of remote control technology we will initiate the chemical reaction and fire the rocket motor which would then take the rocket up off into space. So the first thing I need to do is to measure out the fuel. So the fuel as I said is unsymmetrical diamethyl hydrazine and I'm going to pour some into this measuring cylinder about 30 millilitres to pour into our fuel tank. So it does smell a bit like fish. About 30 millilitres. Right. And we'll remove the rest of the fuel to a place which is far, far away so it can't possibly combust and cause us any problems. I'm going to charge the fuel into the rocket or into the fuel tank. The oxidant for this chemical reaction is N2O4. It's liquefied inside this cylinder, but it's, um, as you'll see when I get it out of the cylinder, it forms an orange liquid, and that orange liquid breaks apart into two molecules of NO2, which you'll see as an orange gas above the liquid. So here we have a cold measuring cylinder, which we've cooled in ice. Now I'm going to condense the N2O4 into the measuring cylinder. You might want to look back a little bit <coughs> So we're going to try not to breathe this material because it can be quite toxic and you can see the orange fumes. So there's my into a fork. And again, I'll shut the cylinder and remove it to the side. Okay. So now I'm going to pour the into a four into the oxygen fill tank, and then we'll initiate the reaction. Can you stand the other way? Okay. So as you can see. The vessel is a little bit warm, so it's actually evaporating the N2O4 as we pour it in, but as it cools, it will stay liquid inside the tank. So there we go. So let's close the, the tank now for the N2O4. So this is the oxidant. And the last thing I need to do before passing over to Norman, who will initiate the reaction, is to close the tank to allow the fuel to pressurize. So, 
Are we going to count ten, Norman? Okay. Three, two, one. All engines running. Lift off. We have a lift off. On a boy out. It's absolutely great to be doing that again after a lapse of about 15 years when I gave my last uh, schools lecture uh, in which I used to carry this around the country talking to um, school children, postgraduates, undergraduates, all manner of audiences and uh, they, always, they all, all seem to find this a, a very interesting experiment actually and I used to uh, give them the, count, uh, the actual countdown of uh, Glyn Lunny counting down to the, the actual Apollo 11 liftoff which seemed to go down well prefaced by Alzo Sprach Zarathustra, the music which was played during the Apollo 11 coverage way back in 1969. So it, it went down well. Well, this reaction was discovered in an explosion with a slightly different chemicals here in Nottingham. And then it was published that there was an explosion and we believe that the scientists from NASA then read about this and it was subsequently taken up by NASA for their rockets. We were delighted that during that era we were able to um, see an application of our work on M204 which when it was initiated was purely an exercise in extending scientific knowledge, uh, in other words blue skies type research, um, which of course is, well in my book anyway, is, is, the, is the essential type of research to be done in universities, but it, it was so exciting that years later it became so relevant uh, in this particular area of space travel where M204 was, was by the end of the 60s used extensively in all kinds of uh, spacecraft as the, as the rocket propellant oxidizer.